You ready? You ready? Let's fix my hair. <laughs> <laughs> that probably will go in. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, good. So today I have Sophia. <laughs> Sophia. Well, I mean, what's the context here? We're actually medical school classmates, so everyone just like pick someone up off of us. <laughs> we just met five minutes ago. Yeah. Um, but you are really big on Instagram. I'm not really big. She's pretty big on Instagram. She's being humble. And we didn't know each other. Well, we knew each other because of med school, but we both didn't know about each other's like social media presence. Yeah. I found out like a month ago <laughs> that Priyak was like big on YouTube. Well, so I decided that because she has like an Instagram group and I have this YouTube group that we would like come together and like share our thoughts on things. But more importantly, I don't actually know her that well and you don't know me <laughs> that well. And this is a function of us not talking to each other for a while because med school is intense. But I figured this is a good way to start. But this video is also going to be about both of our experiences getting to medical school. Four parts. We're going to cover elementary school, middle school, high school, and college. And kind of talk a bit about the type of students we were like, uh, the grades we got, big experiences, and how we changed along the way. And we'll try to keep it brief and concise, but hopefully this gives you an insight into the different experiences, and it will help me get to know Sophia better, because... It's been <laughs> a year. It's been a year. We don't know each other, yeah. Exactly. Okay, so I'll start. So, um, elementary school, I was born in India. I stayed there until I was about like five or six. So I came here in like second or third grade. I moved around a lot, state to state. So my elementary school days are actually very, like, I don't remember anything that much. I was English as a second language kind of person. I didn't know pretty much any grammar or anything like that. So mostly up to like fifth grade, I think third and third through fifth grade is like the parts I remember. And at that point I was mostly just playing basketball and my dream was to be an NBA player. Like that was it. That was what I wanted to do in elementary school. I wasn't even like a good student cause I didn't know English that much, but I had a great, great family support network and I had great friends. Uh, so that was elementary school. Okay, I did not know first of all that you <laughs> were born in India and didn't, like, I, I didn't even know. Um, so I was born in Chicago, and so I did speak English in elementary school. <laughs> um, but yeah, I feel like it's hard to remember what I was like and stuff, but I feel like I was just like any other kid. Like, I didn't care that much about school. Like, I did care because my parents were like, your only responsibility is to go to school, so mm. you better be good at that. Yeah. Um, but besides that, like, yeah, I feel like I was pretty, I was a pretty average kid. Well, that brings up a really important point because we're both relatively South Asian. I think that's pretty safe to assume. <laughs> but let's talk a bit about the whole stereotype about like Indian parents or even Pakistani parents. Mm -hmm. um, I actually did never had any peer pressure from my parents in the sense of uh, I never felt pushed to do well. But I did always have, as Sophia was saying, like this need to be like, oh, like education is really important. So I was at least lucky enough, even from as early on as elementary school, to never have any sort of outside pressure. Yeah, that's really good. I feel like I didn't used to even like do that well in school. And like <laughs> my parents were really chill about it. So like in some ways, I guess they were, I don't know, like they weren't the typical like South Asian parents. But um, they did always stress that it was really important. Okay, let's move on to middle school. You're going to make an addendum because your middle school and high school were combined, right? Yeah, like my, so in Chicago, we basically had like elementary school went up to eighth grade. And what? Then, eighth grade? Yeah, yeah, middle. and then you go That means you're in, you're in school with like people who are like 14. Babies, yeah. Or like, yeah, well you yeah, when yeah, you're yeah. in elementary, isn't that crazy? Do you guys get separated or like? Yeah, so I, I did end up doing this program where I like, I started in high school in seventh grade. Oh, okay. So then like, by that point, I was with like, kids who are a lot older, but yeah. Okay. So, okay, I'll let me go through my middle school. It'll, it'll be fast. Middle school is much of the same. I still want to be an NBA player. I was a huge Steve Nash fan. I have a Steve Nash model, but I don't know where it is, but I still have the Steve Nash thing. I was so into basketball and I was like, I'm gonna be the first Indian basketball player in the NBA. Uh, that was still the dream. I also started running in middle school, so that was another big thing. But aside from that, like grades were still relatively mediocre. Uh, nothing too crazy. I liked math. <laughs> That's pretty much the only thing I liked. I hated English. In middle school, we had this thing of math where you had like, you could be taking like seventh grade math in sixth grade, or you could be taking like sixth grade math in sixth grade. And where I went, 
all of my friends were in the seventh grade math and sixth grade, and I was like the only one in sixth grade math and math sixth grade, which sounds like really silly, but that actually was like a massive blow to my ego because it, it kind of like, from that point on, I always saw myself as like, oh, like school is just like, like I'm not good at school per se. I'm not like the best student. I'm like average. So that's how I always saw myself. So those were like the three main things, track, basketball, and like never really seeing myself as like a perfect student or even at the top of my class. If anything, in middle school, I would have put myself in the 50th percentile of my class. Hmm. Um, so just want to say, Pirog is really smart. That's I remember true. we had like a mole bio <laughs> seminar, like workshop thing together the first <laughs> semester, and he knew everything. I did not know so things. thanks for that, but mm -hmm. no. Um, anyway, so when I was in, I would say like eighth grade, that was the first time I really started to care about grades. Um, I would get like such a high from getting like straight A's. <laughs> oh my god! No, that was like. I cared so much at that time. And so like all throughout middle school and high school, I was like really hard working. Oh good. Um, and I got like very good grades as a result of that. Um, and I, I did have a really like smart group of friends as well. Um, so that probably was just like a good influence on me and is part of the reason that I cared so much. I don't mm -hmm. know. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, besides that, I feel like I, I don't know, like we all took the same classes and stuff, so I just kind of like fit into that group, mm -hmm. I think. Um, but yeah, the culture at my like high school slash like middle school program thing that I was in, um, it was like everyone cared. Okay. So that was just like the culture that was normal, so. Well, I think one of the big themes I already picked up from both of us, and this is something I talk about a lot with a lot of people, you are the sum average of the five people you surround yourself most with. And if there's anything I value the most about my childhood, it was the fact that like I was surrounded by such great people who always wanted to do so well that even when I didn't think I was like the best, mm -hmm. I was still motivated and that made all the difference. It seems like you had a similar yeah. thing. Did you yeah. know what you wanted to do in middle school? Um, not necessarily. I was definitely like open to medicine. I feel like when I was really young, I was like, I want to be a ballet dancer. Right, see, like, is that I, it? Let, or let or me tell you, I never even took a ballet class. <laughs> so like, why? I don't know why that's what I wanted. But then I when I realized that that's that wasn't going to happen, I was like, yeah, I'll just do the next best thing, which is be a doctor. Wait, when was, was this in middle school though? Well, I mean, like, was it? When I was, yeah, like, I would say even before that. So it was like, in, like, I was open to the sixth idea. Sixth or seventh grade or eighth grade even? Yeah, I mean, I was open to the idea of med school and, like, it's not a coincidence that that's, like, something that's very favorably, like, looked upon yeah. in culture, <laughs> right? Like, yeah. so. Yeah. Um, I never even thought of a doctor. My aunt and my grandma and my family members were always like, you're going to be a doctor, but like every Indian yeah. family member says that. Yeah. So yeah, exactly. I was just like, whatever, I don't, I'm not going to take much value in that. Yeah. Um, okay. But it does, it does like have an effect on you. Actually. Oh, totally. Like, you know it's like, like a desirable thing. Because it's like And Indian, there's no reason to pretend that like it doesn't exist. affect people. Like it does. It totally does. I agree. So. Um, okay, let's do high school now, which for you was the same thing, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Okay. so you talk about it. First. Okay, well, my, you can add on stuff too, because I'm sure. So my high school was actually the turning point. So all of the smart, really intense friends I had in middle school, which I love to this day, they all went to this much better high school, per, like quote unquote better. Oh. I went to this high school in my district that was, you know, like not the best, but not the worst. <laughs> um, and I was really upset about that because my mom, I, I first of all was a fr apart from my friends, but my mom was just like, you know, like we have to buy a house and all of that happened. So I went to this high school and I was fine. Uh, and I continued running there and running was actually how I made like my core group of friends in high school. But more important than that, because of this belief that like I was going to this less appreciate less prestigious school mm -hmm. I was under this belief like oh I should be doing really well mm -hmm. <laughs> which worked to my benefit because then I actually started like doing a lot of like well-rounded stuff I was like running a lot but at the same time wouldn't let my grades grade suffer because I was so like oh everyone's going to a better school so like this school is like mm -hmm. easier which is really weird psychologically if you think about it yeah. um, and also in high school I had this like massive complex of like I just really want to focus on running and I wasn't really focused really on school, but I was still making sure I kept up with school. I took a grand total of four AP classes in high school, but I did really well in like all of the classes I took. So I'd say my grades in middle school were actually worse than my grades in high school. I actually did graduate high school with like pretty much all A's, which is like 
was a lot easier in the sense because I didn't take very many challenging courses, but I did start taking grades a lot more seriously. Um, and so that was my high school story. I see. So, yeah, so I actually wanted to go to this high school that was, it was like the best one in Chicago. And like my best friend got in there and I didn't get in. And so <laughs> I, I stayed at the high school that I was doing seventh and eighth grade at. Okay. Um, and it turned out to be really good though because I was able to take 10 AP classes, so... In high school? Yeah, in high school. And like, also, the thing with taking like those classes in high school, sometimes it's just like a scheduling matter. Like, mm. if they can give you, like, if they can fit it into your schedule, then you'll get to take those classes. Yeah. It's not even like, oh, I, I want to take more APs so I can. Yeah. Um, so it worked out really well. Like, I ended up having great opportunities because of that. And it wasn't, the thing is, it wasn't even like a bad high school that I was at. It was ranked like two or three. <laughs> but like, I wanted to go to, it was called Northside, Northside College Prep. My brother actually goes there. <laughs> but yeah. So just aim high. That's a good yeah. thing. I think that's always good. Um, being ambitious really early on is always. I think that's the like that's the pri like the privilege of being young. You nothing is impossible when you're young, and I think it's, it's so always true. important to like make sure you set really ambitious goals because you will never probably meet even one of them like me. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like if you reach for the moon, you're still gonna land in the stars, right? Wait, what is it? That is like a is it, is it like you reach for the stars, you land on the moon, or no, you no. reach for the moon, you it, land on the stars? The second one. I don't know which one makes more scientific sense, but which whatever. Yeah, just remember. <laughs> farther away than the moon and someone pointed that out to me. That's but, true, but like the moon is considered like, I don't know, like a bigger deal. Exactly. Like, like stars like small. You exactly. Know? <laughs> Where did you go to undergrad? So I went to Princeton. Okay, so she went to Princeton and I ended up going to UC Berkeley. Um, do you want to go first with your undergrad experience? Yeah, I can. Okay. So I also worked really hard in undergrad and I had less good grades. What did you major in? So I majored in public policy. Yeah, I remember you saying it wasn't um, science. Yeah, 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 not science. Um, but then, obviously, I was pre-med, so I did take a lot of science classes. Like, it was probably, like, at least, like, two a semester. Okay. So, like, that's still a lot. Oh, it totally is. Um, but, yeah, so I worked really hard and had less good grades, but they were still good. What like, was, um, did you ever feel imposter syndrome? Did you have any challenges? Um, in undergrad, uh, not not that much. Okay. No, yeah, I didn't feel imposter syndrome as much in undergrad. I feel it Do you, more. Why don't you explain to them what imposter syndrome so, is? It's hard to explain. It's like when you feel like you don't belong. Like even if you've sort of like earned something, like you've gotten into a certain school, like you kind of look around and feel like everyone around you is more qualified than you, and like you don't fit in or that you don't deserve it, sort mm -hmm. of thing. Yeah. So. so you, but you didn't feel that at Princeton. No. Which is saying a lot because Princeton is a, it's like the best school. It's like the best undergrad school if I, if I recall correctly. So that's, that's pretty awesome. There's a lot of, you know, I feel it more here. I feel like every, like all our classmates are really smart. Mm -hmm. Whereas I think there's a little bit more of like a range at Princeton. Dude, what else did you do aside from studying in, in undergrad that was meaningful? So I tried to do... I mean, I tried to do things that were not just like student organization, like clubs that were sort of like within your college campus bubble. Because I feel like a lot of people join like student organizations and like mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really like impact anyone except like the 20 people exactly. in the organization and you like attend a meeting once a month mm -hmm. and like that's it. So I tried to do things that would sort of reach like the outside community okay. so one of the things was like there was a consulting organization it was a student organization but we were working with like nonprofits. okay so like the susan g komen foundation was one um so i led a team of like five or six students mm -hmm. on a project for them so that was cool because we were like we were actually working with the organization mm -hmm. Um, and then of course like volunteering at like oh, totally. a hospital and whatnot like yeah. just to get that clinical experience in. <laughs> um, and then I did a lot of cool like internships so like biotech or other no so I did one in it was like at this hospital in the Bronx called Montefiore oh nice um, so that was sort of on the like hospital like strategy slash like administration mm -hmm. side of things um, I did like a summer abroad where I was learning Persian in Tajikistan. Oh my god, that's um, a big word. So yeah, that's like a place that no one has heard of. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't know my geography either, yeah. so it's not helping. But that's awesome. Um, well, similar to you, I guess. I actually felt imposter syndrome my first two years at Berkeley because again, I didn't take that many AP classes. Um, so when I went in and I met all these people who were like, oh, I took like 80, 85 AP classes and I have like a <laughs> 6.0, I was like, 
Oh, okay. Um, so a lot of like my first two years were like actually in a relatively dark place. I felt pretty isolated. I felt alienated. I felt all of the imposter syndrome. And as Sophia said, imposter syndrome is like, I didn't deserve to get in here. I don't belong here. Why did the admissions committee let me in? So my first two years actually were so bad that I actually was studying the entire time. I didn't make like any friends at all. Um, and at the end of the day, I think one of the things I realized was um, like this bubble you create on yourself was very self-imposed. I didn't like, it was all because of me. Um, and so basically after those first two years that were relatively dark, I was able to come out of it, learn from it, grow from it. And I was able to finish my last two years a, bunch, a bit more strong. Um, but yeah, I was still a relatively good student. Uh, I did a lot of research. I did a lot of uh, asking around, hanging out. But yeah, I think that, that's pretty much it. So I'm gonna end this by just asking, like looking back, what things kind of helped me and you get to where we are? I, I can't answer for you, but for me, one of the things that really helped, and I know this sounds counterintuitive, was the number of times I failed and I struggled at Berkeley. Like those first two years were hell and I hated every aspect of them, but I became such a strong person because of them. I was learned to pick myself up after every failure. I learned that like not everyone here is the same and regardless of like the number of like talents we all come in here with, it's all about like, as much hard work you can put in. And that's something I still hold on to this day because there's a lot of people that you'll meet like here, like everyone is talented, but I know for a fact that I know how to work hard. I know that if I fail, I know how to get back up. And I know that like at the end of the day, I'm passionate about what I'm doing and I love what I'm doing. And that's why um, I will be happy in this profession because medicine is essentially what I want to do. And I learned about that through pretty much all the failures I had at Berkeley. I'm like realizing who I was as a person, uh, what I like to do and um, yeah, so that's that's my show spiel. Yeah, I mean, I agree with what you said. Like that definitely applies to me as well. I remember my sophomore year was probably like the hardest year academically. Like, and I just I worked harder than I ever had before, and like it was fine. Um, but also, I think getting to sort of immerse myself in like the public policy sort of like mm -hmm. realm and getting to learn about things like outside of science mm -hmm. made me like a little bit like it made me an interesting candidate for med school and like oh, definitely. it just like expanded my horizons because like we're gonna be studying science here for <laughs> a while. the next however many years so was, I'm glad I got to explore like another area and that's something that I think med schools will always look at like what do you like to do aside from science because <laughs> everyone's gonna like science if you're trying to be a doctor and so you really need to make sure you have something else that you care about like for me that was a lot about my first two years at Berkeley because they were so dark for me I ended up creating something to ultimately like help diminish those sorts of feelings for incoming students and that was something that I think really helped and that's actually one of the reasons I started this channel right so um, stuff like that stuff that you're passionate about stuff from your experiences that you can pull up really does help and uh, for you like your public policy experience I'm sure to this day is gonna set her apart from me almost inevitably um, not in a better way not in a worse way but in general like because we're in this class together, I can learn a lot from her and she can learn a lot from me and that's what med schools are looking for. They don't want 100 prereqs and they don't want 100 Sophias. It's true. Uh, because then it's just like, oh, everyone's just here to be themselves. There's nothing they're gonna learn from each other. It's true. All right, high five. <laughs> we know each other better now. <laughs> um, anything you wanna say? Um, not really. Okay. I don't think so. Well, this is your first official YouTube video, right? I know. I feel honored because she's more of an Instagram and I was like, I think you would do well on YouTube. So I got her to come out and hopefully, um, this isn't the last one we make. Yeah. We'll, we'll do more. <laughs> hopefully. We'll do more. Yeah, yeah. This is like, <laughs> all right. We'll do more. So yeah. see you guys later. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. And, um, Oh, Instagram page for Sophia will be linked down below. She has like 50,000 followers. No, I so know. So I don't think you need me to link you to her because if you just Google her name, you will see it. But that's I'll link her uh, Instagram below. Go follow her. And then um, that's it, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. <laughs>